We're coming up with our next session, and this is about Namma Bengaluru and brand Bengaluru. Bengaluru is known for its young artists um, who are creative, who are vocal, woke, and opinionated. We have a bunch of them joining us today to speak about the brand Bengaluru. And if it still has that old Bengaluru charm, is there anything that needs to be fixed or we're happy with what we see of Bengaluru today? Sara Fazal, who's a radio jockey joining us. Desha Oberoi, also a radio jockey. We also have Sunitra Nagraj, also a radio jockey. I'm going to be moderating them. Thank you very much for joining us on stage. A huge round of applause for our guests here, please. Hello. I'd, I'd you know what, Hello. give you the a chance to introduce yourself, your radio stations. Tell us a little more about you. Sara, you first. All right. A very good evening, Nabila. Um, a very good evening to all of you all. So I am RJ Sara, and I host the afternoon show on Radio Mirchi 95 FM. Um, yeah, that's about my show. A little bit. You want me to talk about my sounds. show? <laughs> 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 Heard you while driving, I guess. <laughs> that's usually my time. Yeah. Good evening, everybody. My name is Disha Oberoi, and I host the breakfast show on uh, Red FM. It's the morning, prime time, 7 to 11, when Bangalore's infamous traffic is just at its best. That's when uh, four hours I get on radio and uh, yeah, if you're ever stuck, which I'm sure you will be, you must tune in. <laughs> Sunetra. Yes, hi Nabil and uh, good evening one and all. This is RJ Netra from Radio City 91.1. I've uh, well been for donkey's years on radio now. I think almost a radio fossil. But yes, having said that, um, there's uh, you know, uh, a never full stop for what you love. Absolutely. I am also the programming director for Radio City. Uh, I host the mid-morning show between 11 to 2 and uh, yeah, uh, absolutely I get to do what I love the most, uh, being behind the mic and uh, managing a lot of other things as well. Uh, yeah, uh, look forward for this conversation right now. I know and I'm, apologies for calling you Sunetra, I think yeah, we made a mistake. That's my full name. Um, yes, that's my <laughs> okay. radio so name you're known as RJ Netra, Netra yes. but your name is Sunetra. Yes. Okay. You're yes. also an actor I see. Yes. <laughs> nice. A few films here and there. Right. Yeah, what yeah. do you like better? Oh, radio, any day, behind the mic, any day. Behind yeah. the mic? Absolutely. I mean, once on screen, you never want to go off it, right? Yeah, I mean, yeah. I, I did consider radio. I think my voice, uh, there was it's one, good, of, the, good, <laughs> there was one of the radio yeah, uh, yeah. directors who actually called me in for it, but I was so enjoying TV and reporting that I, uh, I, I thought that, you know, maybe I should stick to TV a little longer. But since you're an actor, you should tell me, isn't that more enticing? It is, it is, absolutely. But you know, as an actor, it's, it's also very taxing for you to look the way you need to, the, to behave the way you need to. And there's a lot of, uh, you know, it, it's, 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 it's a different science altogether. Right. So I, I've sort of, I've been lucky to do it here and there in bits and pieces when I'm sort of getting uh, burnt out on radio and then yeah. again to come back to do what you love the most. It's nice to hey, But I envy you. I don't think journalists, news journalists can do both roles. Can't act and yes. report. <laughs> I don't think we but, have the choice. But sometimes don't you act uh, while on a panel? No. That's an create. allegation on us. No. <laughs> <laughs> no. Yeah. We're honest. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, yeah. Fine. <laughs> All right, yeah, so Sarah, what about you? I mean, you know, speaking of brand Bengaluru, you know, uh, the, the reason why we have a bunch of RJs here is because Bangalore is really big on radio culture. Yes. As much as we see, um, you know, some would say that radio is dying, but I, I believe that Bangalore has never seen that lull when it comes to uh, radio at all. More number of radio channels coming uh, to four. Uh, you have more number of radio stars who are doing so well. You know, people really, f I th is, can you blame it on the, Traffic of Bangalore? Credit, <laughs> to the rise credit, of radio? Actually, credit, credit Bangalore's Bangalore. Bangalore. traffic. <laughs> we credit, credit Bangalore's yeah. traffic. Radio is still alive. Radio is, uh, radio is not just surviving, it's thriving. It's a great medium. It's entertaining. It's dynamic. It's the only dynamic medium, um, uh, local dynamic medium in the world, and it's absolutely free of cost. A lot of people don't realize that about radio, that all you need is a radio set, and you can tune into any channel. There is no subscription. There is no fee. And, and the uh, reach. And the reach where... There are times internet doesn't reach places where radio exactly, does. Exactly, yeah. So uh, the medium is nostalgic, it's beautiful, it's emotional, it's, uh, you know, t I do this myself. I call my colleagues on their radio channels and say, Gana bajade. And when I hear my name in a little <laughs> dedication, it still gives me a lot of joy. So radio, I think, is an absolutely beautiful medium and uh, it's here to stay, Nabila. It's going nowhere. 
Absolutely, and I think um, you, you nothing like a good radio station playing some nice music while you're on your drive. Um, no it's, amount of your and, favorite and playlist can match to that. You know, what's the best part about radio, in my view, is the surprise element to it, right? You don't know quite. what song is coming up, Absolutely. as opposed to a playlist that you've preset. You know, I want to add to what Disha just said, that radio is very dynamic, also for the fact that it's storytelling and the, the whole yeah. art of storytelling never dies, right? I'm imagining there's, it. There's always yeah. somebody out there who wants to listen to a good story being told to you in the most beautiful manner possible. And the most sexy voice. And the, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if you say so. Yeah, and, and, and the best part about radio is that it leaves it to the listener's imagination right. to take it the way you want to take it. Absolutely. Right? So eliciting any emotion in your listener, I think that's an art in itself. So radio yeah. is not here to die according to me, no. Also considering the fact that the ones who are listening to radio at, at, a, at any given point in time is either alone all by themselves in the car yeah. or they just, you know, have this thing hooked on. So there's, it's, a, it's a lot of a one-on-one -on -one medium. So there's a lot of credibility. There's a lot of relatability with uh, the RJs and the kind of things that we speak also. So it's not, it, along with the music and entertainment comes in a lot of credibility on radio that uh, we, you know, often... Um, um, you know, don't realize, but there's a lot of one-to-one -one connect with the A lot of emotion also. attached, yeah, and yes, curiosity, yes. excitement, it's all the emotion, uh, and you're not able to put a face to it, it's a voice, so do you, do you feel uh, there's, there's, this, there's a flood of following when people get to know, oh, this is what Ajay Netra looks like, this is what Disha looks like, or Sara? Navila, I must tell you, the first few seconds are such a giveaway when somebody meets you for the first time, because you can make out if you've disappointed them, or you've lived no, up to the expectations, man. or you <laughs> I agree, I agree. So you just watch them for the first three seconds and they can't hide it. Nobody can hide it. And you just got to, sometimes you disappoint people, sometimes you don't. But that's the beauty. But Love you know, it. I'm going to look at it from the positive side because whenever we, uh, we've had people coming and looking at us when after they hear us, the first reaction goes like, oh my God, I never knew that, you know, you're going to be this way. Like sometimes more than what our imaginations yeah. could think about, you know. And the voice to top it all is, is just like right here in front of us. I mean, this is like superb. I mean, the experience of it is very overwhelming for us as RJs. Very overwhelming. Because in a TV, if you take the TV medium, right, people get to see you, how you are and what yeah, you are. Yeah, and true. Your entire personality. But when they get to do that on radio, when they come to and come and meet us in office, I think we leave them stunned all the time. <laughs> I think yeah, I mean, I, I've always been very inquisitive of radio. In fact, I did a small stint in radio way back. But anyway, uh, but my... What I want to get here is when you when you're on the radio, you're you're when you, and when you're trying to speak, you want to get to the hearts of your listeners. You want to say all the nice things and often be positive about uh, everything, right? Everything in the world. That's that's how you grab your audience. Uh, but with but with the kind of uh, with brand Bengaluru at this uh, this point today, it's very it's very disheartening to see the kind of traffic, the potholes. Uh, I mean, how do you how do you how are you positive in this scenario all the time during your shows? I think, you know what, after a, po after, uh, after a certain point, we've sort of normalized it all. <laughs> now, you know, if there's a pothole, you, we, we just sort of steer clear and then go and we know exactly what to do, where the pothole is and how to maneuver through the traffic. And you're just standing in, in traffic probably for three, four signals and you're not complaining. Now, I'm not saying because, yeah, I'm listening to radio or music, but then we've sort of normalized the entire uh, hustle that yeah. there is and it's very normal for us on a, on a given day when there is public uh, a holiday and there's no traffic it's 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 suddenly like okay what just happened to Bangalore now you don't you can't relate that you can't relate a road which you saw during COVID and that is very dreamy for us which essentially should be the you know the way that there is yeah. less traffic and a lot of peace on road you basically no, you try you basically it. try to beautify all the the disappointing also. scenarios. The beautifying I wanted to also. use another word, but yeah, all the sad scenarios. You you try to make it more pleasant I think with a little your bit words. Of both, you know, Nabila, because uh, apart from just making the entire scenario of anything in Bangalore look positive, we try to make the person feel what they're feeling. We go along with them. Yeah. Like we are their voice with them. Oh, you know, I had to maneuver through this bad road, and you know, I got late, and you're like, guess what, man? I'm going through the same thing. You know, I am where you are. So we try to make it so relatable. Yeah. They're like we're not a different species altogether. Yeah. Oh, being an RJ, you go through the similar things. Yeah. I mean, that's the connect that we build with our listeners. Absolutely. So uh, it's a little bit... You know, what's been the hardest part in the last few months running up to the elections? Uh, what's What's been a challenge or what's been this one request from your listeners to debate about or to talk about? Uh, why don't we hear from you, from the those behind the screens? 
or behind the scenes Bengaluru on what's roads. hurting Bengaluru? Bengaluru roads. I think traffic, yeah. of course, but I think like Netra was pointing out, it's become an issue which is now very synonymous with us. Right. Okay, we know that there's traffic, but what are we going to do about it? But I think it's more about the roads. Are we going to have any roads left at all in the next coming years? I think that is an issue. You know what's happened with Bangaloreans? People come out with this um, report every now and then, whichever government it was, that we're going to be fixing the potholes, we're going to fix the roads. But you've heard of once bitten, twice shy. Bangaloreans are 100 times bitten, 300 times shy. So even when we <laughs> announce this information on radio, people call us back saying, Kuch nahi hona iska, you know, and the, the, or, you know, we'll see when it happens. Or, you know, all it takes is one rain for it to go back. Are you saying our, we're cynical? Very, Very yeah. cynical. Actually, when it comes to our roads, Netra, correct me if I'm wrong, your experience. It uh, is, it is. See, um, we don't take it seriously. Absolutely. I mean, uh, it is a running joke that it ba is, Bangalore it is roads, running. Bangalore traffic. I mean, we, like you but, said, but we Navila, normalized one thing it. that the we, roads have done for Bangalore, if you have to look at a silver lining, is that it has increased the level of tenacity in Bangaloreans to a point that look at the fan base for RCB. Absolutely. <laughs> the, Good team, point. the team Good point. can do as badly as it is or is, is trying to do much better, but the fan base is so high on support and tenacity and I think the roads have kind of structured that personality in Bangaloreans if we have to look at a silver lining because uh, how much can you keep complaining, right? Yeah, so we're then There's you also say... a sense of zen that Bangaloreans are almost We're cynical attained. yet resilient. And slightly <laughs> zen, it's a bit in a zen mode zen also, mode. Yeah. yeah. To the point... I think the I zen mode like credited to Bangalore weather. The weather. Not, yeah. no, 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 what, what? no, no, I differ. Co I mean, come on, I'm, come I'm on. in Delhi and, and believe me, Bangalore weather is way better. Yeah, yeah, comparatively, yeah. yes, Compar but compa comparing a Bangalore weather uh, from the 90s that we've seen as we grew up versus what it is today, yeah. oh, it's worlds apart. Uh, and to talk about the roads or even the weather, even if I have to design a campaign on radio, um, you know, in the last few months or a, few, a couple of years probably, we don't want to touch upon foot, uh, you know, the uh, potholes or the weather simply because it's, it's so normalized. And again, it's, it's so redundant that we've been speaking about the same thing as, uh, uh, you know, somebody uh, being in a responsible position in a radio station. I do not want to take that up as a campaign simply because it doesn't see an end. Now, I, if I uh, have to fight for a certain cause, I have to see an end to it. Because some things, it's a perennial problem. Now. I think some things you'll believe only when you see like RCB winning and Bangalore's roads actually being fixed and surviving one monsoon. Let it survive a monsoon and then we'll believe it's done. Yeah. Because uh, till then we're yeah, not... Why no one bout of rain and the city's infrastructure is usually exposed. Which is already in, out there. The yeah, yeah, it's in shambles and, and I think uh, there's a much deeper problem to that. It's a yeah, small city, yeah. so much construction on lake beds especially. So w where can you start, right? And unfortunately you see the civic authorities running after uh, the lower hanging fruits, all the local residents, a lot the of big times, corporates, big builders are left untouched. So yeah. your encroachments and, and even they're bulldozing the, the, the ones who have no voice, the others as, as get to stay. So I think it's very important to understand where you're buying up certain property. Like you mentioned about the lake bed. People don't care. Now, okay, there's an apartment being raised. They don't know what exactly existed in that place earlier and, and people just go, you know, berserk, if there's a property, they just go by, they just, yeah. they, they're not worried, the civilians you know, are not again. bothered really. Who is That's, it that, that we is blame? a problem, sorry? Who is it that we blame? Because if yeah. you actually have to go by the citizens caring much about that, who gives us the transparency? We go with the trust that we are going to get a bit of transparency in the property that we're investing, where, where, where we're going to be staying, but so do you hear, uh, and what's the sense you get from your listeners? Are they, are they, the, do, don't they have trust and faith in our authorities? No, I think there's a lot of apathy. The problem is the civilians' apathy and there's a lot of mis, uh, mismanagement from the, you know, uh, authorities and they both go in hand. Now there's mismanagement if there's at least somebody who's concerned is raising uh, their voice, then there can be something that can be done. But apathy and mismanagement really goes hand in hand. Mm. Somewhere, I think as civilians, as, as responsible citizens, we need to really take cognizance of what is happening, at least sure. question on why this is happening, and right. then it can probably, uh, you know, be questioned or stopped or whatever. But here, we don't bother. Most of us don't bother. There's space. Yeah, and you guys play nice music extent? on the way. I mean, what else? You, yeah, distract, and you distract your <laughs> listeners. Even if they're thinking of going to complain, then you play just, nice. You, you know, play somebody, a nice, somebody, Nabila, somebody, You play a nice song and then they're like, okay, fine, let me do somebody it Somebody has to ease the tension out, right? So I think we are the guys who do that. Don't you agree? Yeah, yeah? Somebody has to ease the tension out. There. Fabulous. Thank you, by the way, for doing that. You really are making it a pleasant place. <laughs> but, you know... Uh, Okay, second, second uh, most uh, 
uh, your, your uh, troublesome requests that you get or uh, something that really troubles your viewers? What, what would that be apart from Bangalore traffic, Bangalore weather you say is bad now? Uh, what else has really bothered Bangalore City? There are issues, you know, garbage, garbage disposal, waste management was a concern. We, it's getting better, there's segregation in place, but a lot of times when you're driving out in the morning, people call and say, we can smell garbage being yeah. burnt. Yeah. And these are black spots. And a lot of authorities come back and tell us, what do we do in the middle of the night? People come and dump garbage at particular spots, convert them into black spots. Water shortage is uh, a problem, and with summers coming up, it's going to increase. Another thing we've noticed, or at least I've noticed, is with a lot of young couples who want to buy houses or even rent houses, nice. the rentals are off the roof. And uh, th I believe, this is what I've heard, is yeah. that the supply inventory is a little less, so the prices are going up. And uh, I mean, it was so funny, at one of the cricket matches, somebody held a pluck card saying 2BHK two two BHK apartment. I want a 2BHK apartment. It's getting that bad that people have to turn to television channels hoping that somebody oh spots God. them. So rental, and we have more than a million and a half workers in the city. And I truly believe Bangalore is one of the most cosmopolitan cities in India today. So do you look at it as and an issue or do you see Bangalore thriving? You have, you have more work. I think and, we and have more work to, to do. Down for more work. work to do, Nabila, because uh, I think you're saying our infrastructure does not fit in. I feel this it's crumbling. Population influx. Yeah. I think it's crumbling because yeah, the, if the I have, it's not going in sync with as fast as the city is right, growing. Exactly. The infrastructure is not in sync with that, and it's a bit disproportionate. And maybe that's why we're feeling the heat and the pinch and the pain. You know, hey, but we could sound like oldies, right? All old Bangaloreans. I am one. I, I guess all of you all are. Of you're course. born and raised in Bangalore? Yep. Yeah, right. No, so I bring an outsider's perspective. <laughs> so I, I, I can, I mean, I've been here more than a decade and uh, it's a beautiful city, right? great energy. The people are phenomenal. It's just these few pain points if we can sort of sort these out. In fact, I'm worried for Bangalore. If you sort this out, there'd be more people coming into this city because it's that fabulous. So, you know, I feel otherwise, Navila, because being born, brought up, and raised in this city, from what I've seen my city to what it's become, yeah. it's a very sorry state of affair. Because but, but that's what development does not happen without a population influx, without actually flexing your infrastructure, and which is, and, and that's when you'd see all sorts of construction on road. It is, it is perennial agreed, yes. but work has to happen, and that's what's happening. Uh, so, do you agree that this comes at a cost? Development uh, expansion comes at a cost, and that's what we're bearing now. But at what cost, Nabila? <laughs> what is the cost? You know, the amount of green yeah, cover flooding, lakes, sparrows, flooding have disappeared. our basements. No green cover left. No environment left. You want development in the name of on behalf of cutting everything out, which is your natural resource. Sure. So there was this uh, article that I was reading the other day, um, done by a scientist from um, Kellogg's University. That there was, it, it was a very interesting observation that he'd made about uh, the uh, climate change. Uh, for every one degree increase of uh, the weather uh, of a certain region, it sort of it affects to a, uh, almost two to three percent of the of the region's GDP. Mm -hmm. The weather and the GDP are actually hand in hand. Yeah, yeah. inversely proportional. This rises and this goes down. And he, was, he made a very valid point there, saying, see, for example, if you look at Bangalore also, Bangalore's weather has always been this, you know, most sought after. Perfect, People come yeah. here for the weather. And of course, and round the year. And round the year, exactly. Jobs are there, weather is perfect. So the people come to Bangalore and never leave. No, yeah, that's nice. Uh, as, uh, you know, again, that's a larger uh, responsibility for the authorities to manage all of them. Having said that, now in the, the summer that we're dealing with, the weather is so bad. It's, it's very hot. It's getting hotter by the day. And as it gets hotter, is it good? Are, are people, is the influx going to remain the same? Uh, are the jobs going to be created the same way because of the weather? Now the, the farmers are going to, uh, what he mentions is the farmers will again have issues with crops and then, they, you know, it's, it, everything is related. Yeah, it's a vicious cycle. It's a you're vicious right. Cycle. I mean, the more people come in, the more, you're more, the more you're using up resources. Exactly. With limited resources, we are only struggling and then you have people coming in. I mean, look at us, how mean. No to outsiders. Is that what we're trying to set? I know. <laughs> Absolutely no. I don't think so. That's you not the narrative. That no, 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 no. I That's not the narrative. <laughs> are always more than welcome. I think we have the ladder. largest heart. Yeah, yeah. In, in, in terms of being a very the city small with the largest city and heart. large heart. Yes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, but that's I think done. It's very important next, for us to manage the next, temperature of the whole, city. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Absolutely, I agree with you. Global warming. I. I. I don't think. Yeah. Bangalore is left out of that box. Uh, but apart from that, when, it, when we speak of Bangalore culture, Bangalore culture is all about young, youth. It's called the 
pub capital of the country. It's called the so music, many things, Nabila. Rock, vibe. It's oh called God. like the space city of India, the science city of India, does the garden still, city of India, the it's air conditioned city. Silicon Valley. Pub capital, Silicon, biker I, capital. Yeah, pub capital, one music, way capital. rock vibe, all of that. Does it yeah. still exist? Does it still prevail? Sure. Are you seeing or are you seeing that dying? You know, that's the spirit of Bangalore. We keep all of this high despite all the issues plaguing us. That's because we believe that someday we're going to make a change to it, but we just don't know when. <laughs> we're very adjusting. Yeah. I think that's the very, word. We're very, very adjusting. adjusting. Like like they say in Canada, no, Madana. I just smart kolana. Yeah, just smart. No, no, no. Yeah, that's the thing. That's exactly. just smarty. Just smarty. Just smarty. <laughs> No, but no, for real, what, what happened to the tag of being the pub capital? Now you see, I mean, I, I think a few years ago itself, there was a deadline, 11.30, you had to shut everything. I think uh, I'm afraid so, to say and this. And there's a lot of talk about how this is killing the Bangalore vibe. But then that's when a lot of house parties suddenly cropped up. People Nothing can kill their own vibe. Oh, that's you know what? what? And now you have Indranagar neighbors always complaining, complaining of noise around. Not just Indranagar. Name the areas which are now coming under the scanner for loud parties and you got to, you know, shut after this particular point of time. I mean, once upon a time, we had a limit till 1 a.m. Yeah. But now they want to wrap up everything by 11.30. Yeah. 11 a.m. 11.30 yeah. max. P.m., yeah. Yeah. I'm afraid to say that if you have to look at it from that perspective, we have a lot of areas to be worried about for Bangalore. A lot. Mm. I'm afraid to say that about our city. You guys, you, you believe that the deadline should be extended? Well, of what the deadline that there is currently, I think I'm very comfortable. We'll find a way around it. I think there are bigger <laughs> but, problems. We'll find also, a way around the deadlines. Yeah, I think we've worked our way through those deadlines and managed to, you know, find other means and ways to keep ourselves engaged. Yeah. Um, I th yeah, like, you know, uh, Sarah mentioned, I think there are uh, other ways and other, I think there are a lot of other things to be uh, worried about currently. About and this. I think the party scenes are really nice. Really what other things? As of uh, now in Bangalore. Yeah. What, what other things to be worried about? You've got, you listed a few. Security, women's safety. Would you think that's a concern in our city? Look, well, I, I've, sorry, I, I was at the cricket stadium the other day and I was with a few friends and they had to leave for some reason and I stayed till the end of the match. It was a cracker of a game. Yeah. I was exiting the stadium by myself through a huge crowd. Nothing at all. I was safe, I got out, people Lovely. made way for me. I was a single woman and this is as recently as a cricket match which can get quite crazy and Bangalore lost. Despite that, people didn't go nuts. Um, you know, I got my way all the way out. Some people realized I was on my own, gave me way. I stepped out, there were cops. So from a personal perspective, I think it's a beautiful city. It's a safe city. There yeah. are going to be incidents, but I'm not going to label Bangalore as unsafe. It's a solid place. You, you know, I would like to make an instant You credit like the Bangalore police for doing a great job? I think people. they are. I think we've made a people of Bangalore. I think I, you know, I myself taken cabs late in the night at 1 a.m., 2 a.m. from the airport or from a party or, yeah. or you know, I, I, from an event. Never have I, been, never have I too I felt never, unsafe to never, take a cab from here yes. to the airport. No. Never was this cringe moment. Never was, never have I felt unsafe. This, that's Bangalore for you, which is why the city is thriving. But Nabila, you know, also. people need to start voting. And I think it's good that they've done it on a Wednesday strategically. Yeah. Because if it was any other day, we'd make that. a long weekend out of it. But people what are you start. sensing among the youth? I actually had this youth panel before this, um, Which where, we saw, where we I did mention that the that first time voters or fresh voters, the percentage has dipped drastically, right? And people, uh, somehow the youth have lost faith in the electoral system. I, are you sensing that or, you, uh, or do you feel that the youth are a lot more involved and plugged in? I don't think so because 2018 gave us a very clear picture, a lot of uh, urban apathy when it came to the urban areas of Bangalore, the BBMP, North, Central, South. Uh, even though we said in 29 years from 1952, we had the best turnout of 76% in 2018, it was not when it came to the youth because we had the, a lot of youngsters missing from that scenario. Yeah. And what I fear this Why election do you think? is... Uh, the, the thing is, I, what, feel lazy, the I, I don't know. You know, a lot of people no, coming... What will change? I think that is my perspective on this. What will change? If I'm going to vote, what's going to change? Is there and anything going to change? I mean, that's such a wrong way to look at it. No, for you my know, conversation, a lot of people, people come out from different states to work in Bangalore True and that. their voter ID cards are registered elsewhere. Right, this is yeah. a genuine technical issue. And I've right. noticed this because uh, people call and say, I'm registered there. How do I get it No, transferred? but yeah, this is surely a problem. It's a genuine yeah, problem. Absolutely. So it can't entirely be uh, people aren't interested. It's a combination of a few factors. But, that, but that's still what, at 20 is to 70 or 80. I'm not. And also true. considering the fact that the Gen Z lately is not relating to today's politicians. They're either speaking very, that their speeches are very redundant, what they do is very redundant for them. They don't know, they don't relate to them. Um, they don't recognize the leader, as in 
uh, the Gen Z today, they need to understand what the person is, what what are their likes, what, what kind of a person this, uh, you know, this leader is. So you're saying COVID. Netas are not coming down to actually connect and chat to connect with the youngsters from, to a, see yes. what their real aspirations yes. are. Yes, on a personal I level, agree. they're still being, as politicians, blaming each other and uh, just finding loopholes amongst each other, which probably is a disconnect with the youngsters today. And that is a very important uh, reason why they're not coming up also. Could we call all of you the the uh, the bridges, the bridge to that to that we disconnect? The, we need to be the, the source of change. Yeah, I'm gonna call us the the source of change, the guiding light, guys. I think we guys should do that. I, I think uh, as leaders also, there, uh, there's some amount of personal connect. I'm sure there, there's social media today, but yeah. then people are the youngsters are very uh, wary of commenting about anything because of the fact that social media is not a, a not a very safe place anymore, especially when you take sides. Talk about hey, are, party, are you talk are you leader. coming? Are you drawing this conversation to freedom, freedom of, of speech? speech? Yeah, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's all we have time for. Thank you, guys. Thank, thank, you, thank you so much, much Nabila. Thank it was you. fantastic talking to you all. So thank so you. lovely and all the best thank for your. Thank you so much, Nabila. It was yeah. great talking. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.